Allahu Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Maryam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes, assalamu alaikum, uh, bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, my name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers and our goal is to revive the message of Islam and we do this through uh, different different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, cash. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so the work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative yes. art, it's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever, you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem, so how deep is the lyrical content, how um, how relevant is it to the audience, how how powerful is the 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 methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem, and second of all, um, the the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience. So it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper, it's about how that message is delivered. Um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as the strangers and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah today you'll be hearing some slam poetry and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate, so no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content, um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them, and that's something very personal, and we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so yeah, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. As Assalamu alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have Tahani your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah her for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Rican Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tani has also been featured on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. She is a passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Sahani has performed at a number of world famous stages, including the Apollo Theater in New York City, to universities in the US, South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Sahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. Um, so welcome. 
Okay, so next person here who will be coming up, inshallah, Sister Tahani, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? No, no, I, alhamdulillah, I felt cheated for like five minutes, but then I'm happy we figured it out. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, perfect. So the next person up, inshallah, is going to be uh, Brother Maj. He will introduce himself and he will also um, go right into the poem. Go for it, brother. The, the stage is yours. All right, all right. wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil mursaleen. Nabiyuna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. My voice is a little raspy. I was teaching all day. But nevertheless, um... My name is Muhammad Ali. I go by Maj or I Poetic on social medias. I am based here in Minnesota. I wrote this poem um, called Friends. It's a very, it's a, it's a poem that's needed, especially in this time, you know, with different generations coming up. We have to understand the importance this religion of ours has on friends and how friends plays a huge role of, around ourselves. And so having the right friends can really set you apart from the rest of the people. So, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem, inshallah, the poem will speak for itself. Uh, Bismillah. <clears throat> Who is a companion on the road? What is a medicine for all the diseases that life wrote? You are a plant at a slower growth. Let fry define all the things that fry you, like most problems you go through, like when good disappeared and bad was in lieu, like loneliness that brings out the wrong from you, like a fog that strayed you from the path that's causing it difficult to view. You know those few that put an end to fry, connecting two to make a friend that is true. Your religion is always based upon a friend that you choose, so take those whose hearts are connected to Al-Quddus, the Holy One, in whose hands fault does not produce, so excuse yourself from those whose hearts are loose and if you choose to stay then be the one to tighten their screw be the one to pressure so you too can be that plant that actually grew so you too can be that fruit that will continue to ripen as long as you too stay on the same crew isn't it true that a person who prays the morning prayers at his time shall taste the sweetness of the morning dew who knew you can be under his shade on that day when the sun is a mile away only for loving someone for the sake of the one who allowed us to live this day isn't it safe to say that a friend who reminds us of tomorrow is far better than a friend who reminds us of today again i remind you to get a righteous friend not saying you're obligated to get the most popular highest of friends, but a friend that brings your iman back to the top so you can feel the goodness, are modest and honest, and their trust will make you feel that you're their closest. They'll help you stay focused until you meet the greatest. Now, you might think there's not such a person to consider a friendly figure or that friend that I pictured because you believe where love and friendship should be, society has fractured. But this dean amends a broken heart. True, finding a friend I described is a bit hard, but always depart from a friend that does not lay out the difference between this life and the next apart. Because if you don't, then you play life with a black card. When you and your friends have the same goal, only then will you play your cards right. And if no friends is found around you, then walk in solitude and make a friend from the one who has all the best of attitudes. Attribute. I mean, you can be a negative person with all the world's attitude, but he'll be your absolute value. The last part of every night he calls to you. Few are awake to answer their friend to ask anything that their hearts drew. The best of friendship have a streak where they get connected at least five times a day and their conversation isn't a chat that snaps away. You stand in front of him while praising him as he praises you. He says, walk to me, I'll run to you. He says, ask of me, it'll come to you. As soon as you ask it or in the afterlife or it can protect you from a calamity that is meant to arrive. A friend that is closer to you than your jugular veins. A friend that knows your every pain, loves you 70 times more than your own birth giver claims how much more can i explain the love he maintains as love reigns and each droplet contains more love than i can ever explain so make a friend from him so then he can send friends that befriended him the love will overwhelm you indeed because then you will see the friends that you need to proceed and succeed as a companion on the road, finding the medicine for all the diseases that life wrote inside the Quran because it's a key to help you crack down all of life's code. So stay heedful as you carry your load, as you too travel to a land of eternal bliss to be your final abode so you can finally relax and unload. Jazakum <laughs> khairan. Wow, I just want to say that you blew us away. That was phenomenal, mashallah. 
And for me personally, when I read poetry, I always am curious about what inspires people to write. So my question is to you, what inspired you to write about good companionship? Um, there was one time where I was traveling to, I'm here based in Minnesota, so I was traveling to New York. And so I was just on the way to travel, I was just thinking like, um, it's very important because uh, a friend can have a right impact on you or a friend could have a negative impact on you depending on how you guys socialize. And so a friendship, you don't have to be very, very religious but a friend that just keeps you on the right path, that motivates you, that supports you, that loves you, that, that critiques you, because friendship also needs to look at the positive side and negative side. So I was just thinking like, you need a friend like that. And what better friend can we have than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because he gives us both sides in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if we make a friend from him, then he will send us friends that befriended him. Because there's a hadith that said, if Allah loves you, then Allah will send you people that that loves him, that he loved. And so you're surrounded with that bubble that is just amazing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu. Wow. Yes, subhanAllah. That's very powerful and very, very deep. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Jazakallah khair. I have a question. Jazakallah khair. Uh, what do you teach? I am a Quran teacher. Usually uh, I teach Qaida, the, the Green Book, uh, the Hingads and, and, and the pronunciations of um, pre Quran. Before you start the Quran, inshallah. Mashallah. So little kids from the ages of four till nine, and I'm just getting them ready for that, you know, world. Mashallah. May Allah reward you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, I mean, Jazakallah, hey brother. Um, and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us all with righteous companions. I mean, and the best of companions really is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. I mean, um, I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank primarily uh, for hosting this on their platform every single year when we host this. It's just an amazing success. And I can say, Alhamdulillah, from the bottom of my heart, I think this was phenomenally successful. So, Jazakallah khair. I want to say a special Jazakallah khair to uh, Tahani for doing this, for doing the very, very difficult job of judging. It can never be. Thank you so much. And may Allah reward you and, um, and uh, you know, for taking the time out. You're also a mother. So, you know, it, I know it's difficult juggling uh, duties. So, you know, I will be for that. And um, yeah, do you have any closing remarks, Aisha? Um, I just wanted to say that um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of the viewers for attending. Um, I pray that we all benefited from the event without our poets. Um, now, saying that as well, um, I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay, you could see me now. Um, no further ado. Uh, you can find the strangers on Instagram. Our website is in the works, inshallah. So please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign, uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing. We hope you enjoyed the letter, the final compilation. Um, a lot of heart went into it from our poets. And thank you again to everyone. And of course, Assistant Tahani, you did an amazing job. Jazakal Khair. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> and lastly, I just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces. Each one was mind blowing and touched my heart. And I'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and had a lot of poetry over the years, as Tahani and as Aisha can both attest to, we had an amazing level of talent tonight. Um, so may Allah reward you all. And yeah, I'm going to close it right there. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.